this is just another reason for me to just indulge in some freaking chocolate, man. <laughs> Welcome back to Rewind with B. Schwitty because the schnozberries taste like schnozberries. Today is International Chocolate Day, so I thought, what better time to uh, figure out what pairs well with what chocolate than International Chocolate Day? Um, again, like the s'mores pairing episode, this is just another reason for me to just indulge in some freaking chocolate, man. But uh, what I have prepared today are um, a Chardonnay a cab soft blend, a late harvest white, and a port style. So um, there's different theories. And also there is white chocolate, milk chocolate, 70% dark chocolate, and 85% dark chocolate. Prevailing theories on uh, pairing chocolate with wine, it's not as simple as you may think. You can't just say, ooh, this dark chocolate goes well with just about everything uh, because wine. You need something that's fruitful, uh, something that will, with tannin, that will pay, play off a dark chocolate. Uh, milk chocolate will go well with something like a port um, or a sweeter style wine. And the white chocolate, in theory, will go well with a uh, light, uh, a white sweet wine, like a late harvest that I have here. So uh, we're going to start with the Chardonnay from a couple weeks ago. Hopefully it's still good. Tastes fine to me. I'm gonna break off a piece of the white chocolate. So, uh, tasting procedures for um, chocolate, or just about anything, is uh, sip. Eat. Sip. Ooh, okay, so that's interesting. So as you know, white chocolate isn't exactly chocolate. It's a derivative of cocoa butter, whereas the rest of this is made from cacao, whereas the rest of this is uh, more dominantly cacao. Cacao. Um, but it kind of, that, that butteriness plays off of the butteriness of the Chardonnay which is great because that's what we're looking for. When we were talking about pairing uh, the Chardonnay, we talked about pairing it with something buttery. And that's exactly what we got here. Not exactly 100%, but it's not bad. See now, just the milk chocolate alone makes that go awry. Um, the chocolate flavor is too overwhelming for the the chocolate flavor is too overwhelming for the Chardonnay. I don't really want to go on, but in the name of science, I guess. So that 70% cacao just turns just turns that sour. Um, it pulls out that the, the green apple notes in the Chardonnay cuts away any of the uh, fat, or cuts away any of the malolactic, um, overwhelms the wine. Don't recommend it. Mm, mm mm. And that, the 85% cacao just turns the uh, Chardonnay tart. Um, it's like drinking like a sour warhead. It's, it's, it's way too much. It's way overwhelming. Um, we're going to pass. Next up, our little Bordeaux red buddy. 
This is Cab Sob Dominant, so it's probably going to do well with the darker chocolates. But let's start on the white. So the white pairing's not too bad. Um, the the it really makes the the fatty cocoa buttery side of the white chocolate shine, uh, which I think is kind of good. Again, just like the white, it's kind of a pairing, but not over overwhelmingly good. Uh, think of this like if you were eating it with a steak, like a classic well well made steak in a pan with a pat of butter. It's that butter part that's playing off of the cab sauve, but it feels like you're missing something more. Uh, let's see where the milk chocolate takes us. Now the milk chocolate's all wrong because there's just enough tannin play there that it makes it, that it overwhelms the milk chocolate, but also has that buttery aspect that would be from the, the white chocolate. Um, but they're they're clashing with each other, so it just doesn't it just doesn't work right in your mouth. Seventy percent dark chocolate is okay. Uh, it's almost too rich uh, in the the it's almost has too much cacao in it to play off well with uh, this Bordeaux blend. Um, it, maybe I need something with even more tannins. It's not doing it for me. Uh, the 85% also, again, still overwhelming. Um, so maybe a fruitier red would be helpful. Something like a Zinfandel to, to play off of it. Um... Yeah, the, the Cab Sauv, the tannins in the Cab Sauv cancel the, the chalky cacao-ness uh, out of it, but it's not, it's not great. Like I was saying earlier, it is a misnomer that uh, dark chocolate pairs well with all wines. You gotta really think about what you're consuming and together, and that's kind of a basic rule of pairing. Uh, I'm sure on a future episode of Rewind, we will talk about actual pairings. Uh, I just haven't really had time to do an episode like that yet. Still figuring all of this out. Uh, this here is from Sextant Winery. It's called a Late Harvest 2010 Sauvignon Gris. It's 14.1% alcohol by volume. And it has kind of a sweet note on the nose. As we might already know, um, late harvest wines are, <clears throat> late harvest wines are wines that hang, that hung on the vine longer than it's their compatriots. Uh, which means they got a higher sugar level, which means they get a higher alcohol level and probably some leftover sweetness like this one has. <laughs> you know, it's been a while since I've had this. I bought this probably four years ago. Just as good as I remember. Kind of has a sweetness to it. Not overwhelming. Uh, tropical, kind of fuller. Um, kind of has like a caramely. It's like if you drank creme brulee, I guess. That had some sort of like citrus or tropical note to it. No, it does go well with the white chocolate. It accents it. Uh, I feel like it still overwhelms it in some ways, but it does play well together. Bringing out, it really, it really is a great accent for the um, white chocolate.
The milk chocolate, on, the milk chocolate on the other hand, is where it starts to turn. Um, maybe something in a similar vein, something kind of sweet, but more frizzante, uh, with a little bit more bubbles to it, might be a better pairing for that. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That uh, seventy percent just brings out a bitterness that I wasn't expecting. Well, I was expecting, but from the wine, not from the chocolate. Mmm, that eighty-five percent. Surprisingly, not as bad as the seventy percent. Um, it kind of speaks to those uh, toasted caramel notes. But in the end, uh, it leaves the, uh, the white wine really acidic, um, which is surprising given how uh, sweet and um, uh, given how sweet and uh, savory the wine was up until that point. It does pair okay, but it's not overwhelmingly great. It's not doing what I would have wanted it to do. Uh, not in a way that would be enjoyable for an entire bar of chocolate. Finally, we're gonna revisit that Roxo uh, Negrette um, from 2009. Now, um, I've had the, the Roxo port refrigerated because I I'm one of the believers that say that you could have a port in the fridge for up to 30 days before you, well, you could have a port indefinitely, but it'll retain its characteristics better in the fridge. Um, so this is being served at a cooler temperature than I would normally, but it does do a great thing with the white chocolate in that, in that it makes it taste almost like ice cream. It has a vanilla bean characteristic, and that's probably because this has some vanilla in it. Um, next up is the milk chocolate. Now the milk chocolate takes a turn. It makes it taste more of like a, um, a mocha, a frappuccino, something in the coffee realm. Uh, not overwhelmingly so, just kind of like one of those sweeter coffee drinks at Starbucks. I don't, I wouldn't know. I don't personally drink coffee that often or at all. Now, 70% cacao is weird just because it's transformative, it changes the wine. Uh, the tannins play off of each other somewhat. Uh, it kind of reminds me of an iced mocha, <laughs> again. Again with the coffee reference. Um, but uh, definitely um, no whip on that. Uh, half calf. It does give it a punch though. Um, I would say that's an okay pairing. Um, chocolate and port generally goes, dark chocolate and port generally goes well together. Hmm. The 85% is a bit overwhelming. Uh, it kind of, it's almost cloying. It, uh, it turns the port into like molasses in your mouth. 70% is the way to go with, a, with this Roxo port at the very least. Um, so, that's my chocolate pairing guide for the moment. I'm sure we'll revisit this on another National Chocolate Day or um, some sort of chocolate pairing episode uh, for the educational purposes, but this was just for fun. Um, it made me kind of think outside the box on um, these four wines over here. But tell me, have you ever paired wine with chocolate and not have it go well? Do you prefer dark chocolate, milk chocolate, or white chocolate, which isn't chocolate, but still delicious? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Please like, share, and subscribe. 
I'd really appreciate it. Uh, we're trying to get to 100 uh, followers, subscribers, so that I can release the Switzerland special that I, sh that I shot earlier in February. Uh, it's my pride and joy. Uh, I'm still working on it, but if you guys get me there, I'll release it and we'll talk about some Swiss wine, which is really, really, really cool and I really enjoyed my time over there. You can't really find Swiss wine in America or pretty much internationally. Uh, it's, it's a very, they make it domestically and uh, drink it domestically. So uh, if you're interested in that, please hit that subscribe button, hit the share button, throw it on your socials. Uh, you can find me at, at bschwitty anywhere on the social medias. And um, thanks for watching me eat chocolate and drink wine because that's amazing. Uh, I will see you next time on Rewine with B. Schwitty. That's me.